If it costs me my life, I will hear these words in my heart and mind to this very day. The Catholic Church is the church. It seemed as though the Holy Spirit branded that in my mind and heart. And those mornings I would wake up at two or three in the morning. I don't know if you believe in the devil. Maybe you've been educated out of spiritual warfare. <laughs> Maybe you think the spiritual warfare is a myth. I don't know. But let me tell you, I had some wrestling to do early in the morning. It seemed as though I'm back in my Pentecostal mode. <laughs> the devil would wake me up and say, get up, I want to talk to you. <laughs> I'd wake up as fresh as I am now, 2.30 in the morning. And he'd start asking questions. Are you crazy? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? You are destroying your church. You are wishy-washy. You are going into error. Now, when Satan talks to you, he brings his environment along, which is depression. And so at 2 and 3 in the morning, I'm going from living room back to den, fighting. You know, you have really lost it this time. You're really out the box. <laughs> but then, after I would wrestle so long, it would come back to me, the words of Ignatius, where the bishop is, there is the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is the church. It is the church. And I could feel that environment lift. And I was able to go back to sleep, resting in this truth. I have found his church. I have found his church. Now maybe that's not significant to you, but it is to someone who's been searching for a long time. I have found his church. It cost me, my friends, Brothers that I have walked with for 40 years, that I love dearly to this very day, that we lay out and pray together. And I say lay out and pray, I mean lay on our faces before God. We'd fast together, pray together. But this was just too much of a stretch for them. They said, Pastor, I love you, but I can't walk with you. That was the most painful event in this whole journey, is seeing good people walk away. I'm not talking about heathen and demons. I'm talking about good people, praying people. It's one by one. They begin to walk away. Three stayed, and they're still my friends to this very day. Three pastors. Oh, they talk about their little Catholic brother. <laughs> but at least they let me eat lunch with them every Monday. <laughs> that was the cost. How was I going to live? I'm not going back into the classroom. Lord, please. <laughs> I've been in public education for 28 years. Please, I get on my knees, Lord. <laughs> How was I going to eat? And my wife was so worried. What are you going to do for a living? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. How are we going to pay the bills? Genuine concern. I don't know. What are you going to do when you get in the Catholic Church? I don't know. <laughs> I 
I don't know. Still don't know. But I know who sent me there. He's proved himself more than faithful because in the end, he came through. And not only did he come through, he blessed me to be able to pay all of my bills off, every last one of them. And not only that, he provided income for me for at least three or four years where I can go to school full time. I don't come to the church empty handed, however. I come humbly. The Lord gave me the ministry that I had at the Pentecostal. He gave it to me and he blessed my ministry. Then he asked for it back. I've given it to him. However, he gives it back to me. And I don't want you to think that I'm coming to the church with nothing. Deep down in my heart is a passion for our Lord. Deep down in my very soul, there's a love for his church. I love the church, that sweet, holy, sanctified bride of Christ. I love it. I love everything about it. I love the bishops. (laughs) I love the priests. There's my priest right there. Stand up, Father. Stand up, Father. I love the nuns. I love the smells and the bells. I love it all because I have discovered it. It has cost me much, but thank God I'm home at last. 